The last drone strike carried out by the United States in Kabul on the 29th of August was the topic of investigation in the U.S. Congress. On the hot seat was the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. When questioned about whether the U.S. government had killed an aid worker or an ISIS militant, Blinken only maintained that the government was reviewing the strike and that he did not know whether the strike had killed innocent civilians. The guy the Biden administration droned, was he an aid worker or an ISIS-K operative? Uh, the administration is, of course, reviewing that uh, that strike, uh, and I'm sure that a you know full assessment will be will be forthcoming. So you don't know if it was an aid worker or an ISIS K operative. Uh, I can't speak to that, and I can't speak to that in this setting in any event. So you don't know or won't tell us. Uh, I don't. I don't know because we're, we're reviewing it. Our correspondent Susan Tehrani has been tracking all those developments. She sent us this report. Take a look. Some two weeks after that U.S. drone strike killed 10 innocent Afghans, including seven children, the Biden administration continues to insist that the matter is being investigated. However, more questions are left than answers. For example, without any real presence in Afghanistan, how is this investigation being carried out? And is this administration once again cooperating with the Taliban. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken was grilled at the Senate by Kentucky Senator Rand Paul about whether or not this strike in fact killed an ISIS-K member or an aid worker, in which Anthony Blinken replied, I don't know, adding that the strike was still being reviewed. Rand Paul replied, you'd think you'd kind of know before you off someone with a predator drone. Susan Tehrani reporting from New York for We On, World is One. But let's take a look back at the events that are under question now. This was 48 hours before the August 31 deadline. The U.S. conducted a drone strike in Kabul. This was in apparent retaliation to the August 26 suicide bombing at the Kabul airport. 13 U.S. service personnel and over 170 Afghan civilians were killed. At the time, the Pentagon had said that an Islamic State Khorasan planner and another one of the group's members were killed in the precision strike. Weon was the first to cast out on the Pentagon's version of events and whether the U.S. had successfully killed whom they claimed to have targeted. Weon's Anas Malik reached the drone strike site the next morning, 14 hours after the rocket struck the area. What he saw were harrowing visuals. The place still smelled as if something had just been melted. Our correspondent sent us this report. The family says that they demand justice. They have outrightly denied any links with the IS contrary to how it has been reported or claimed. And they say that these were innocent civilians. This is what the family has maintained. Uh, there were children among them, 10 civilian casualties as what the locals have been telling us. And they've also maintained that uh, there was no secondary explosion. Uh, there was only one explosion that took place because of the rocket that had hit the car. We even spoke to Emal Ahmadi, the victim's brother. Emal had lost his own daughter in the strike and was grief-stricken by the entire incident. But even then, he told us that the strike was a wrong one and that his brother, Zemarai, was a trained electrical engineer. Yeah, my name is Emal. That uh, Yesterday, unfortunately, I lost my uh, big brother and with uh, three uh, uh, sons. And also, I uh, lost one of my uh, small uh, daughters and one of uh, my uh, brothers lost her three child. And also, I lost one of my nephew in here. Yeah. We even took a look at the vehicle that was targeted in the strike. From human remains to parts of the vehicle, everything was still pretty clearly visible. The victim, Zemarai Ahmadi, was among the 10 civilians, including children, whom the U.S. killed that day through a Reaper drone strike in the middle of capital Kabul. One of those killed was from the Afghan army. Nasir Hedri had fought alongside the same American forces that targeted him and was waiting for his special immigrant visa. 
but the killing of an innocent family fueled by retaliation and without credible intelligence adds to the more than 70,000 Afghan and Pakistani civilians who have died from direct U.S. attacks that were intended to kill terrorists. And we earlier spoke to our correspondent Kate Fisher from Washington, D.C. Take a listen in. This was Secretary of State Anthony Blinken's second appearance this week on Capitol Hill as he tries to defend the Biden administration's handling of the withdrawal from Afghanistan. And once again, he argued that uh, President Biden was left with little choice given the deal that had been signed with the Taliban under his predecessor, Donald Trump, and he defended the administration's actions. We did learn a few other things from him as well. He said that the State Department is still tabulating the number of special immigrant visa applicants who need to leave Afghanistan. And he said that there were still thousands of American green card holders who remained in the country. He, we, he also talked about that U.S. military equipment that remains in Afghanistan, some $80 billion worth. But he said that much of it is inoperable uh, and that none of it poses a strategic threat to the U.S. or to Afghanistan's neighbours. Uh, there was an interesting moment where Senator Bob Menendez, who is the top Democrat on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, uh, said that he thought the whole uh, evacuation had been fatally flawed. And um, that's quite a criticism coming from Joe Biden's own party. And he also said that he would be prepared to subpoena Lloyd Austin, the defence secretary, if he wasn't prepared to come and give evidence to this committee. So just like uh, during his House appearance on Monday, Secretary of State Blinken facing very tough criticism. And in this uh, this hearing, it wasn't just from the Republicans, but one of his own party as well. Uh, so another tough day for the Secretary of State on Capitol Hill. But he continues to say that the Biden administration has done the right thing. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.